Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction. We're on the road to the Super Bowl, and Sports Interaction has you covered pregame, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. She scores! Take a moment to look up at the ceiling. You're about to bust through it. SDPN, the PWHPA, and Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Presents hockey like you've never heard it before. The Noxie and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Carol Emard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Welcome back, hockey fans. You're tuned into the Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN. Unfortunately, Cax is unable to make it this week, but I'm going to do my very best to bring you all the entertainment you're used to, and I won't have to do it alone. Thankfully, we're so fortunate to have two guests with us today, famously known for their roles on the U.S. Olympic team. From Team Sonnet, Hannah Brandt, give us a wave. <laughs> and from Team Harvey, Savannah Harvin, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. This is the first time that I've had to do it alone and that we've had our two guests in one location. So it's a Ooh. nice change up. I kind of like it. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> I want to know why, first of all, you guys wanted to or were coerced into coming on together. <laughs> Basically, we, we do a lot together, I feel like. And when I was asked to be on the show, I pretty much um, made Sav come on with me. <laughs> and yep. she knows enough to say yes, I feel like. Yeah. I asked. I was like, did you ask someone else? And they said no. And then you picked me. She's like, no, I asked you first. I was like, okay, I'll come. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, I know it's going to be a great show. We're coming off Owen Sound. Um, as we were talking about before, before we started recording, we had Sonnet and Harvey's play on Saturday. Harvey's walking away with the win as they just seem to find a way to do 3-2. But it was a nail biter. And I want to say like the standings show differently, but this is a matchup I think that has been probably the most entertaining, you know, rivalry that we've seen growing in the PA this season. What's it like? What's your take on it, first of all? First of all and what's it like to be playing against each other? They're definitely really good, fast, competitive, skilled games. I'm trying to think, where where did we meet up last time? Where it was uh, like the buzzer beater goal? The, yeah, that was in, um, oh gosh, the one... We were in Ottawa, but... Was it Ottawa? Oh, we were in Gatineau? Gatineau. Gatineau. Yes. Yeah, that, like, I find both times, or, like, every time we've played Sonnet, that it's just, like, it is intense, and, like, even the game before this one went literally right up until the buzzer beater. And then this one, another close game, like, could have gone both ways. Like, thankfully, Harvey's, you know, getting it out <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We match up well, I guess. Um, the Sonnet, we've had a tough time getting wins this year, but we've kept it close with Harvey's and hopefully we will win one of them eventually. <laughs> That's the hope. And we like keep speculating about our playoff format. I mean, nobody really knows for sure, but like you can pretty much guarantee with four teams, right? It, you just got to win a couple games at the end of the season. So I've got, I still have my faith in Sonnet. The trajectory is going the right direction. So no offense to Harvey's, but. That's okay. If I have anything to say though about it. Am I <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see. And so I did see you guys in warm up, uh, Brant. Sorry. You guys had these nice long sleeve shirts. Like the Harvey's had like the burger bunch hats from the last couple tour stops. And now Sonnet's gotten on this bandwagon. You guys had Sonnet slapper shirt so i want to know <laughs> the story behind that and specifically i think it's on the back it says it's like a list like a numbered list and it says slap shot water 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 can you tell us what <laughs> yeah. is going on so, i'm not really sure where the slap shots i think it came from that first weekend we might have scored a couple slap shot goals and then it just became a thing and we were just instantly the sounded slappers like literally right off that first weekend i don't think anyone else has like a team name but it just it, it fit and it feels right. And our team does take a lot of slap shots. I personally do not. Maybe I'd start scoring more if I did. But um, and then the water, water, water. We just we're always talking about hydrating and always getting that water in after games. And um, yeah, and we had a little calf cramp in the last weekend with Miss Abby Rock. So now we had to add at water, 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 
and then in parentheses electrolytes just a little reminder for some <laughs> oh people. my gosh because she had her little drama um oh at the end of that first game so yeah just just things to keep in mind when we're <laughs> out there grinding it out every weekend all the priorities. I love that. And I've been trying really hard. I think we're going to get Abby Rock on the show. She just seems like an absolute time. So I'm looking forward to that. I also, I tried to wear like my best, like red, blue, and white. So it says Friday beers on it, but it was the closest <laughs> I could come to an American shirt. So I tried, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get some swag from the rivalry series. You know, maybe. I feel like I'm more unbiased now than I was in previous years. <laughs> Love that, love that. Meanwhile, we're in all black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a funny story about the all black. Um, Savannah is known for literally only wearing black. Like, we all kind of do it, but, like, Sab especially. And we were going to her birthday dinner a couple months ago. <laughs> and people kind of showed up, like, one at a time or whatever. And she, by the end of it, she realized we all wore all black. That was the one her. time I was in a and, gray. Yeah. I was in a gray <laughs> And I wasn't even in all black, but like when you go in my closet, it is literally like black on black always. Yeah, and then like two people came in and I didn't notice. I was just like, oh, I like their outfit, whatever. And then like a third, and then like a fourth, and I was like, oh my god, everyone's in all black. And then That's I was awesome. like, you guys, and that, Hannah was the mastermind behind that. I think. Yeah, it was like forty-five minutes before like dinner, and I was like, guys, how funny it would be if we all wore black? And like, I think Kelly Panic was coaching a hockey game or something, and had to like rush home to change just to like make it happen and we all we all pulled it off everyone was dedicated i don't know if we took a photo or not we did and that's where we messed up we did oh uh, opportunity mess i love that though yeah the, the all black is like that's same with me like i try to spice some color in here and there but it's really difficult i just have lots of shades of black and gray yeah. um so uh, speaking of colors okay let's start mm -hmm. before we go to college let's start hometowns i'm i'm sure i'm gonna mess this up hannah <laughs> you're from vadnais that vadnais Vadness, you were close. I was close. I, like, yeah. I, I, the the like French, very very small French part of my brain wanted to say that with some sort of accent. So, oh, Vadness, good. Vadness, yep. Heights, Vadness Heights, Minnesota. Correct. So, uh, we'll start with you, I guess, since I already butchered your hometown's name. <laughs> um, I guess what is like your most memorable moment, or like what when you think about your hometown, like what was growing up like. Um, so yeah, we're just a, a tiny little town. Like we don't even have a, a high school or anything. People go to the surrounding, but we're in the cities. We're just a small suburb. Um, but yeah, like I used to walk up to the local outdoor rink to skate in the winter. And after the 2018 Olympics, the city actually like named that rink after us. And we've been out there come a couple on. Times skating outside this year. And so all these girls got yeah. to come out and skate there. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, I just kind of remember like growing up with my neighbors, we would, just hang out all the time, all year round. And we just had a fun little community and yeah. So only good memories. That's amazing. Did I, did you guys post that on social media? Were you guys out there? You were out there a couple of weeks ago. Eh? Yeah. A couple yeah. weeks ago. Yep. Oh man. We'll have to, we'll have to grab some of those pictures uh, for our YouTube watchers. And then <laughs> Sav, you were Downers Grove, Illinois. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Downers Grove. Yeah. And Grove, what was that? Yeah. What was your childhood like? Um, Great. Uh, we have a rink actually like right down the street and I grew up like there and then another one that's like maybe five minutes and I remember just like my parents driving me and my brother like to there we had to have like those 6 a.m. like morning like Sunday skates um, and then I'm like Hannah but not a local rink but like my dad used to make a rink in the backyard for us um, so growing up me and my brother like especially over the holidays was so fun we would spend like every afternoon and evening out there just skating. I love that. I, I like was similar. Like I grew up in a pretty small town. They used to put outdoor rinks on like all of our baseball diamonds. Did you guys ever like show up and just pretend that you were absolute dust? Cause you know, there's always that group of like teenage boys and they're like, Oh great. Here comes some girls. Like and you just absolutely like smoke them. I can't say I've done that, but that would be fun to do. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I haven't done it, but I wish I would have yeah. as a child. Maybe that'll be on the docket for your guys' next, uh, yeah, next hangout. Yeah. 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 And just find like, like the oldest skates possible because you can't be showing up with all your <laughs> yeah. brand new gear. They'll they'll we know. Did, we had Kelly Panic and Net, though, this last time. So that was pretty funny. So we did look she pretty did dusty, I think. Yeah. She did I was going to say, how did she do? She did Not good. bad. Not bad. She got me a couple of times on the breakaways. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. So let's go to kind of like your college route. Um, I'll start with Sav. What you ended up going to Clarkson. Was yeah. that, was that always, you know, number one pick or how did you first land on? Yeah. On not, Clarkson? Um, always I would say I always like kind of envisioned myself at a bigger school. Um, going through the recruiting process at the time I was actually in Lake Placid, New York, which is like about an hour and a half from Clarkson. Um, I was going to like a sports academy there, National Sports Academy. And may went and toured Clarkson with my family and just loved the campus at the time. Like I said, living in Lake Placid, I loved the small town and the close community. And then when I got on campus there, I just like knew right away with the coaching staff and just the vibe of the town and the feel like it was, I loved it. Who was coaching there at the time? Um, Matt. Uh, DeRoche's his wife, Shannon. And then at the time, Matt Kelly was there as well. And then nice. by the time I, so I committed my junior year of high school. And then when I came in, we had two, it was just Matt was still there. Um, and then we had two assistant coaches, new assistant coaches, which were there for my next years, which were awesome. Was, was Duggan at Clarkson when, yeah, yeah. it was yeah, Duggan. So she was there my freshman and sophomore year. Nice. And yeah. then was Britt Smith around at the yeah, end of your... She was there all four years. We came in, like, we joked that, like, we came in the same year because her first year was my freshman year. That's awesome. I love yeah. Britt Smith. Actually, she was... Uh, I played with her in, like, junior back in high school. She was our D-man. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fun. Yeah. yeah she, I still am, like, pretty close with her. I, like, talk to her often. So, yeah, she yeah she's awesome. She's at Syracuse now. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, head coach is... Yeah. She's head coach at Syracuse, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Go Orange. Um, yeah. Yeah, we also all, always used to make fun of her because she would come in with like tan knuckles. She lived on a farm and she would drive the tractor. So like <sighs> the tips of her fingers would be like stark white and then she'd be super tan. You know, Brit, <laughs> she's, she's Italian, so she's always super tan. Yeah, but yeah. that's awesome. So you love playing for her. And then, uh, Brant, you were at University of Minnesota. Correct. Three-time Natty Champ. I got this wrong at the pre-show. I had yeah. only two down. So three-time sure? losing <laughs> only two. Of course, Clarkson. Clarkson. I was in the stands for that game. It was my senior year of high school, and I got to go. I was in Boston at the time, and it was at uh, QPAC, went up. Yeah, that was a bummer. Great Big for time the bummer. Great for Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm 0 1 against Clarkson, and I don't like them very much for that reason. That's okay. <laughs> That's not too bad. I mean, three of four Natty Champs, you obviously not had some, some fond memories there. Why don't you take yeah. us back to Minnesota? Yeah, well, it started my freshman year. Um, the team had won a national championship the year before. So we went into that season trying to defend it, I guess you could say. And we ended up going 41 and all that year. So it kind of was like this big thing because there was the streak and all this crazy stuff. So I didn't know what losing was in college. <laughs> so my sophomore year, we made it another like 20 games, I think. And we finally lost to North Dakota. Um, it was, yeah. So but that freshman year, like, it, it sounds all, all easy and everything. We were 41-0. But the quarterfinal game of the Frozen f- – well, of the NCAA tournament, we played the North Dakota, the Lammer Twins, went to three full overtimes, and we finally scored with, like, a minute left. It was – so it was a 120-minute game. I don't even think I could move for, like, a, the whole week after. Um, no kidding. But I will never forget that game. And then we were hosting the Frozen Four – so we like needed to get to it and then we ended up winning it and everything. That's but, cool. You won at home. Yeah, we won at That's home fun. that year. And then, yeah, so that was a great year. Then sophomore year, lost two games. One was to Clarkson in the final. <laughs> so really still didn't know a whole lot about losing, which was nice. Uh, it was just a fun team. Like we, I don't know, we were lucky to have great players as well. So I don't know, um, won a lot of games. And then junior year, we won at home again. I think we beat wow. Harvard, Harvard that year. And then... My senior year, we ended up playing Boston College in the final. So we lost was, to BC in overtime for that. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, I think I was happy though because I was like, I don't want to play Clarkson again. <laughs> so we beat. Yeah, <laughs> like, we no, beat BC we that year, there. and that year they were forty and zero going yeah. into the final. Yeah. So we were like, oh no, we can't let them go forty one and zero because that was us, and that's kind of like we're the only team to have ever done that. So we were like, can't let them do that. And I know too many of those girls, Screws, <laughs> Keller, Carp, all them. I was like, can't lose to them. So, yep, we found a way. Cast had come back that year um, halfway through the season. It was a nice little boost for us. That yeah. Harvard game, was Emirates Mashmeyer the goaltender at Harvard at the time? I think she was, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. You guys, like, have played against each other for 
like all of all of oh, kind of the PWHPA players, like other than like yeah. the super old people like Cax, but I don't, I don't <laughs> hold that against her. Um, <laughs> so wait, I want to go back a second. When you lost to North Dakota, you said like yeah. what? Like what were the repercussions or like what was the atmosphere? Like was it like a super <laughs> I, let there? I was just like, hey, look, we're human. No, that was honestly. I think we needed to lose the game. Like we needed to get the relief because it was like, it was like a 60 some game win streak. And it was like, just kind of getting to be a lot, like a lot of pressure and stuff. Cause it was just like, when are you going to lose? And I think at that point it was like kind of good to just get the loss over with and then start fresh again. Um, but it would have been fun to finish that year out with the national championship. <laughs> Cause yeah. we were so good that year too. And I think, I don't know, for whatever reason, Clarkson just had our number. No. It's funny, like, our, I'm coaching the University of Toronto right now, and, like, they've been number one ranked, like, for the last couple of weeks or whatever. Like, there's so much pressure that comes with mm-hmm. being at the top, yeah. whereas, like, I've always loved the underdog because it's like, oh, nobody yeah. really expects you to do anything. And then if you don't, you're kind of safe. You're like a fail safe. It's like, oh, well, yeah. we suck anyway, so whatever. So I can imagine, like, having that streak kind of, yeah. like, looming over you creates a ton of pressure. Yeah, I agree. Um, like, I've been on both sides of it where I've, I mean, been the one doing that. And then I've been like my senior year, we weren't really expected to win. I mean, whatever. And I, I kind of prefer that underdog role. It's more fun. Uh, just less pressure, like you said. So, yeah. And then Sav, so you also had two nine champs. Sorry. I thought that you guys both had two. You only had two, <laughs> I, I should say. Date, but I won. Yeah. <laughs> really got a twist the night that there. One, oh, you though, only won two. <laughs> that on, that two that overtime. We would have would have given you a game that yeah, you year. Probably would have beat us. In New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> And I got inside yeah. intel from, I reached out to Renata Fast uh, oh. for the episode. And she said that your game winning goal from behind the goal line <laughs> on your first, in 2017, your first yeah. Natty Champ. Walk us through what happened. Um, That game, that's kind of like going back to being the underdog. We were definitely like Wisconsin was definitely number one uh, going into that weekend. Um, we had played Minnesota the night before back. Like there was like, I forget if the score was like five, four or like, it was like high, it was high. It was back and forth. And then, um, against Wisconsin, I wouldn't say our power play was the best that year. And specifically (laughs) in that time it was struggling and it was the first period. They took a penalty right at the end and I was on the power play and I just gave the puck to Wisconsin and they went on a breakaway. And I just remember thinking like, Oh gosh, (laughs) but then (laughs) we were good. Let's move on. So then like period ends. And it was a first shift of the second period. We were still on the power play. Um, I was on like the right flank. Puck was on the left side. Somehow came behind the net. Goalie got like a little bit outside her net. And I just remember being like, uh, Banny, who was behind the net, had the puck. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, I'm so open. I'm so open. She passed it. And I just kind of like flung it at the net. Um, and it went in. So yeah, that was exciting. And then I was like, power play. We were all like breathing a little less, like a <laughs> little more relaxed after that. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. So fondest Clarkson memory then. I mean, that's got to be up there. Yeah. Is that the, the number one? Yeah. The, that championship. But then the next year, like as a senior and it kind of just like riding out, like we won back to back, which was exciting. And then just for it to be my last college game, I kind of didn't know what the future held for me with hockey after that. So that was like definitely the top. Yeah. Perfect. And perfect segue. Cause I was just going to talk about less hockey, more school side. Yeah. Um, so I, we're going to ask you guys about we. I, I'm so used to talking about being cats. <laughs> like, I'm just like split personality syndrome here. But I want to know what you guys studied. And then also, like, if and when hockey is, you know, kind of not your primary focus, um, will you find yourself back in the field? So since Savvy, you're talking, let's go with you. You studied business. My dog's growling at probably a shadow outside he's he's not very really cute but he's not very smart oh, <laughs> um, let's go sav you studied business innovation and entrepreneurship so yep from what Clarkson, yeah and then go i got ahead, a yeah. minor in psychology and law and i actually really love like really love law I was looking at Dan's dog to see if she was going to react. I know. Are they, are they all perked up now? Like, hey, well, what yeah. was that, Sam? Hello. They can um, come on. Hello. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. She's got her ball. 
She just wants to play. Oh, what yeah. a cutie. She is the cutest. So, so, say hi. Is that how you say hi? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god what kind of dog is she she's a little cattle dog um uh, thing so she's got a lot to say so so this is your 15 minutes of fame girl yeah, get it yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's that's her that's zoe she's got a lot of energy i haven't walked her at all today it's pretty Aww. cold um but yeah i'm gonna go walk her after and i love then, that then she'll behave for me rupert do you want to come say hi yeah come on yeah. up Come on up. Oh. oh. <laughs> Zozo. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> oh, friend. Who's there? <gasps> How old is Rupert? Ah, uh, he's all, almost three, I think. Oh my gosh, is he almost four? Oh God. I don't know. I think he's three and a half. Oh. That's just crazy. Well, she's about three as well, so. Oh my gosh, they could be besties. Yeah, yeah they, they could be. be. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, sorry. We got totally sidetracked by dogs, which happens all the time on the show. I, I don't even apologize, actually. I love it. Um, okay, business innovation entrepreneurship. Okay, yes. And you business. said a minor in psychology? Yep, in law. Okay. Um, I actually really like love law classes and like that, loved those while I was at Clarkson, which actually ended up, I ended up getting my master's of legal studies after Clarkson okay. from, I- Arizona, from Arizona State University. Wow. I did like a master's of legal studies um, with like a sports law and business concentration, which I really like loved. And so after I, I don't know where that leads exactly or what exactly I would like to do, but. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> There's a lot there. <laughs> so wait, you graduated in 2018. Yep. And then did you go to Arizona state or did you do it? Like it's at not, home? Yeah, it was an online program. I took like, so I think I started it in, when did I start it? Maybe in 2020. Um, I, ca- I did, definitely took like one year off after school, just kind of was playing and figuring out what was next. And then knew I like s- still loved that field. And like maybe, like ideally I would love to go to law school, but just the time, I'd, just right now, the plan, not in the plans for at the moment. And right. then came across this program that was like legal studies and had like, sports law and business kind of in it which i both i really like so it was like it was an awesome program i loved it but just don't and know yeah sorry was was that a one or two year program there how long did it take you to complete um it took me like a little bit over a year but wow. it could you it's kind of like a do it at your own pace um right. once things started picking up with hockey i ended up like taking less classes just so then i didn't have like that much stress but when hockey wasn't that busy i was in like four classes that's incredible. So like maybe like player agent or like Yeah, something like that would be cool. Yeah, I don't I don't know. But or yeah. like something with like a sports team working there. Yeah, I don't know. Amazing. The opportunities are endless, but you still have like your your golden years of playing ahead of you. So we won't get too far ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> exactly. And then Brent, you were in health and wellness sciences. Yeah. With kind of what was your trajectory there or what still is your plan once playing is not your primary focus? Yeah. So technically it's like, a, it was like a create your own major with those were like, that's what it was called, but whatever. Um, they do that but, at Minnesota. Eh? Just, yeah, create, you just create, create, create whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I always knew I wanted to either do like PT, PA or nursing. I didn't know which one exactly, but so I kind of took all the prereqs for those um, posts, like those schools or whatever. Um, so, but now I've kind of leaned more towards nursing and, uh, yeah, I'm actually working. It's, it's a casual position. So it's like three shifts a month, but I'm working at a hospital. It's a children's hospital in St. Paul as like a nursing assistant. And I'm really enjoying that kind of get to like work with the nurses and see what that's kind of like and work with the kids. Um, but yeah, so kind of being able to do that while playing hockey has been really nice just to get that experience. So if I do go to nursing school, which is my plan, I'll have a little bit of a, some experience and a little heads up, I guess. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Really, really cool. And how, how many years is nursing nurse Hannah? <laughs> nurse Hannah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> how many years is nursing school in the States? Um, so normally you would just do like the four year undergrad, but since I obviously didn't do that uh, as a, so since I already have my bachelor degree, there are programs that it takes anywhere from like 12 to 24 months just to finish, just to take basically nursing classes. So right. there's a program I'm looking at that's 12 months. It's hybrid. 
Uh, you obviously do all the clinicals and stuff, and it's just an intense program, but you can get it done in 12 months. So that's kind of where I'm looking when I, whenever I'm done with hockey, but it's not something I can do while I'm playing hockey. That's the only thing that's a little unfortunate with the healthcare field. You can't just take online classes and keep playing. So yeah, just, just halfway there. You'll figure it out. I'm sure yeah. you can just, just wing it, putting in yeah. an IV or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. fine. It's just, yeah. That, that looks like a vein. <laughs> No, that's that's really cool. I mean, both of you guys have, I'm sure, great careers ahead of you outside of hockey. But as I said, I mean, I think the best years are still ahead of you in terms of playing. So we will get back to your playing careers a little bit. I want to know if you remember, I mean, I'm sure you remember, but what was it like the very first time you got to wear that Team USA jersey? Like, where were you? What was the setting? Uh, kind of walk us through whoever wants to go first. I can go first. Um, mine, definitely a little bit of like a non-traditional path, I would say. Like my first time wearing a U.S. jersey was a post-grad series, the first ever rivalry series. I believe we're in London. London, Canada. Not. But, oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, just making sure. Very different. <laughs> we were in like a uh, rink. It was like, it was sold out. I remember being just like so nervous, stressed, but like so excited um, and then there was like a huge snowstorm and my family's like flights and stuff were getting delayed and somehow they still made it. And I just remember being like so excited that they were there and just like also nervous, but like so excited that it was just like a dream come true to get to play um, and wear that jersey. And it was just like definitely a game I won't forget. That's crazy. So your very first time was like wearing the U.S. jersey was at a rivalry series game. Yeah. Post-college. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. I think I was did you... So did you play U18 before that? No, no. No U18. That was like first ever US jersey. No, no U22. For yeah, no, nothing. <laughs> That's very young. Where were you hiding? <laughs> <laughs> At Clarkson. <laughs> with the championships. <laughs> against the Gophers. <laughs> That's incredible, so, girl. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely, definitely different. But I think it, my path being unique, like I was able to just like enjoy and like not just be able to like be the best for what like I could have been at Clarkson, which is what I think like set me up to be successful after college. Whereas like everyone's path is different. So mine definitely was as well, but some people peak early. Some people peak late. Yeah. yeah. I think it no worked out perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I just had to look back. You were born in 95. So there was U18 like yeah. in oh, yeah. as your <laughs> I'm just like maybe she's my age and there was no U18. No, there was, there was definitely all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. I, okay, before we go to Brand, sorry, I'm just really fascinated <laughs> that that was your first time ever wearing the jersey. Um, what was like the phone call like? Like, how did you? Was this your first yeah. camp? Like, how did you? Oh yeah, so that is where it goes. Like, so Clarkson, like we won my senior year, and I was just like on a high. Like, was kind of trying to figure out like, do I still want to keep playing hockey in college? Was so amazing. Um, we were treated so well at Clarkson. Like. Uh, just kind of figuring out like, what do I want to do after, um, decided to keep playing. I actually like that summer, I graduated in May, maybe that like June or July, I got an invite, my first invite to an August camp for USA hockey. But this August camp was a little different cause it was right after the 2018 Olympics. So it's kind of like, this was a younger camp. So I was invited, but I was too old for anything. <laughs> I was one of two that was like graduated from college and not eligible for U22. So I was just kind of there, I guess, just, you know, getting experience. Um, I didn't get invited. So then like that was in August. And then like the national team camp was in September, kind of like the reset for like a new quad um, from the August camp. I didn't get invited to September. So I was kind of obviously bummed just kind of again seeing what's next seeing what I'm gonna do and then halfway through that camp I think there was like a day and a half left I actually someone had to go home and I got called in yeah. wow so then um made it for the last day of that camp um and then had like entered the program I guess you could say and then that year had gone to like maybe is this when we became friends <laughs> uh, maybe that? yeah that well then i had gone maybe like that was what four nations was that year and i went to the pre-camp while like the players who made the four nations team were at college so i was just kind of like a sub and then once the team yeah. came I, I was out <laughs> but gained gaining some experience and then that then we had a winter camp that december that's when we me and hannah became friends 
And then I made the first team like that February after that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And since you brought it up, yeah. you guys became instant buddies. Like, how did this no, happen? I had no choice. Okay. Apparently, I was mean to her. I don't remember this stuff. I made her play charades, I guess. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. I don't know. I think it was just boring. And his face I, is just devastated right now. Like, yes, charades. I don't know. I, I feel like I just, like, I don't know. I just kind of assume I know everyone, so I just go along with it. I, apparently, I made her play charades with in front of In front of people. Yeah, and I just, I was shy. I don't really think I spoke and much. And I didn't know that, so I was just like, I don't know. But then yeah. after that, apparently, we were friends. Then we were friends I don't know. Then. Yeah. Hannah's like, I don't know. We're still even friends. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> she just pulled you out of the shell. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would be pretty nerve wracking being like at your first camp and all these girls, like for those who don't know who are listening, like it's really rare to just like yeah. scroll yeah. onto the senior national team and be like, oh, hey, I'm here. Like you yeah. guys have never met me before. I mean, I'm sure they have, of course, playing against you, but it's really rare. These girls have been in the program for like for a, year. Yes. a decade. Like, well, some like, of them UITs, at that point. They've like come up together. Yeah. So it's definitely a different environment, but I'm saying yeah. cool, like, they were all welcoming. Yeah. And we're very scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are so terrifying and not fun at all, which yeah. is so evident in this episode, obviously. Um, so we'll swing it over to Brian now. I mean, not to we really set the, the bar high there. there. Story's gonna be on the opposite end. <laughs> so you started on the U.S. national team when you were five, um, yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> no, why don't you why don't you talk us through kind of your career with the national team? Okay, yeah, I mean, I I played one year of U 18s which that's great. Um, get that like get that experience in. Um, we had a great time. We went to Sweden, won a world championship. So a lot, decent amount of those girls are still playing. It was like Lee. Um, Carp, Haley Skrupa, who else was on that team? We had a really good team that year. Um, but yeah, that was fun. And then that next year, I managed to be on the t- world championship team in 2012. That was weird. I was still in high school. I don't really remember what? much. Yeah, I don't remember much from that, but it was in Vermont. Um, and I remember we beat. I, I didn't play my. Sorry, that's my dog. That's um, okay. <laughs> I didn't like play a whole lot, but it was a great experience. Um, being on the team and then took a little break through college. I didn't, wasn't on too many national teams through there, had some injuries and stuff, whatever. Um, yeah. And then managed to make my way onto the 2018 team, which was, I don't know. (laughs) Um, which was always like a dream for me. Um, cause I was at the 2014 tryout and didn't make that team or residency, which I mean, that's obviously hard to do. So, um, but 2018, I was able to make that, work and yeah it was fun yeah and you guys took home gold that year of course yes. it's like i, I don't I, we have fans who listen to the show co- from all over like canada u.s uh over in europe um it's very fresh in the canadians memory of course anytime <laughs> they lose but also very fresh in yours i mean that 2018 gold medal game was just fantastic it was a treat to watch i'm sure it was a treat to play in yeah, I guess a treat is one way to put it. I mean, obviously the result was a treat. Um, the the shootout was a little stressful. Um, I don't know if I would ever wish that upon anyone. Um, but yeah, it was glad glad we came out on the winning side of that. And having a gold medal is just something that never can be taken away from us. And um, that team definitely has a bond over having that gold medal. And just the experience was incredible. And the stuff we got to do after the fact um, – I think we were able to, I don't know, grow the game and everything like that in the U.S. because people remember that and so many people watched the game and yeah. It's yeah, you guys cool. were everywhere. Like you yeah. were on like the Ellen show, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, we were in L.A., Ellen show. We were down in Florida. Then we were Washington, New York. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of a whirlwind, but I would do it over again if I had the chance. That's for sure. It was a bummer not to be able to do all that kind of stuff this year. Yeah, for sure. And so let's talk a little bit about 2022 because you guys played on the U.S. Olympic team together, which is still a, such a huge accomplishment. Like, it's so funny to hear you guys or like our Canadian girls or whatever be like, oh, yeah, like, you know, you don't come home gold. And I can imagine it's disappointing. But at the same time, like you are such a small percentage of people that even get to be there. So right. talk us through what it was like being in Beijing and, of yeah. course, like the obvious COVID just like I feel like you guys just got sent all the athletes just got sent on such a roller coaster where it was like what is happening here 
Yeah, um, there it definitely was a roller coaster. I would say just like the stress of even like honestly just getting to Beijing. Like once we were like named to the team like that, it was just like a surreal moment, and like we're so excited. But then just like knowing. Not knowing exactly what comes after that, and like just even like the paperwork, just like every test, like you never know. You could feel fine, but you're like, I don't know what if that comes back positive. And then there was like so, so many regulations, like if you were positive after this date, like you could not come. But then if you like made it onto the plane, tested positive when you landed, you were fine because then you could like quarantine and get out. <laughs> so it was just like we're fine, making it up as we go. <laughs> yeah, fine, but you would have to be like in yeah. a lockdown for right. Potentially more than 10 days. Like, that's not great. Mm-hmm. No. But at that point, you were like, okay, at least yes, I can get I there can get and I China. will, like, yeah. hopefully go to the Olympics if I ever get out of that quarantine. But it at least gave you a chance. Whereas, like, if you tested positive, like, two days before you were supposed to get on that plane, you couldn't go at all. So it was, yeah, uh, it was it was stressful. But then I think once we, like, got there, everyone kind of, like, it was, like, once we got into the games, I remember not being, like, as stressed. I was still stressed about each test because, obviously, when someone's taking something up your nose you're just like a little no, nervous. Oh, it was <laughs> the throat. oh yeah the throat and oh. yeah it got back i think it but again <laughs> roller coaster you just never yeah it was definitely a different experience especially like me being like that was my first time and like hearing everyone's stories from 2018 and then the years before 2014 like it was just definitely a different experience yeah yeah i mean for sure it's it's a bummer like that that's how it was but at least i guess we were able to have an olympics and i still i mean i had a great time with we spent a lot more time with our teammates and with the other athletes because we no one had family and friends so um kind of when we were done competing we were able to spend more time with those other athletes going to cheer on the events um because it's not like we had family or friends you couldn't go sightseeing yeah that that. um so we just kind of had to enjoy each other's company and um yeah that's kind Which of I'm the, sure, like, benefit. by the end of that, be honest, like, by the end of the Olympics, were you just like, oh, my gosh, get me home and away from these girls? Like, I feel like win or lose, there's a party that's just like, wow, this is a lot. Yeah, yes. But it's also so sad because, you know, once you get yeah. on that flight and you leave, you're never going to be together as a group because um, people retire, people don't make teams. Um, so that's the last time that team will ever be together, which that part's pretty sad. But, yes, people yeah. were ready to go home and to just – take off our masks and like be a normal human again because the month before the olympics we were not normal humans like we were all just like in our own little lockdowns so and honestly when we got to china it was actually exciting because we got to hang out with each other again which right the month month of january we were like not even allowed to hang out with each other just at the rink and that was even limited so i mean yes we got probably got sick of each other but i don't really ever get too sick of my teammates yeah, no, I was gonna say, yeah as much as i said it was like a different experience like i do think like there was parts of it that like i don't think any other olympics like has had like just like the quality time like and i said like with your roommates with your teammates and just like and genuinely enjoying each other's company because again you're not worried about like going to meet family or like obviously everyone was devastated to not have their families there but it did provide a different aspect and like you were able to just like enjoy and lean on each other and like have so much fun being present because again you never know if maybe tomorrow you're gonna test positive but like we you were just like enjoying each day and like getting to like experience it together because literally That's nobody a- in the world understood what we were going yeah. through except us like it was just like it's hard to even like put into words like we'd have people like we'd be sitting in our room and someone would come and like spray bleach at us like not exactly <laughs> like that but like it's just like nobody knew what we were going through and this the stress of just like the, every test like it's just yeah the rest of the world was kind of continuing on as normal and we were like in this like crazy lockdown i don't know especially the month before like we weren't even practicing as a team we were like i guess just like we were literally the only ones that knew kind of that so we really kind of leaned on each other a lot like and honestly what a testament to like the culture of your team too because yeah like i've been on like weekend road trips where i'm like okay get me away from these girls they're driving me fucking nuts so it says a lot about you know the personalities that you guys have on your team i'm sure this is like a concerted effort (laughs) from top down when they're you know building out these rosters to make sure that you guys genuinely just do enjoy each other's company and working towards a common goal my question is like this is more hockey related than anything else but at what point do we see the shootout removed from that gold medal contest well, I think it is exactly. now. It's it is now. Of, yeah. But now it's um so it's in, the, in the semis and finals and finals, I believe it's removed, but maybe not in the semis. I yeah, I, I know for sure 
the but final. It's three on three. So in the final, it's three on three indefinite, like however long it takes. Oh, I thought it was well twenty minute periods, but it's it right. three on three in the final. It's three on three in the final, which I don't personally love. I, I would <laughs> just like to see five on five play it out till yeah the end. Just make it a marathon. Yes, I but I think it's all TV related, unfortunately, mm. which. I get, but I also don't. I mean, it's the biggest stage in the world. It's, we trained four years for that yeah. game. Like, let us just play it yeah. out. That's my And it's opinion. our only, like, moment, ev- like you right. say, every four years that like, we're if, actually if we're in the spotlight. we're going to take an extra hour of time, yeah. I'm sorry, but, like, let us have <laughs> WWE our- wrestling will have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Ping pong. I don't know, whatever else is on TV these days. Seriously. Okay, and going back to COVID... Was there anything that either of you picked up in COVID? Like, I can imagine you guys, as you said, like pre Olympics, you're basically like quarantined individuals, or, or did you guys have roommates? Was it one or two to a room? Um, pre, like, uh, like a residency, you're saying? Yeah. That was like, so that was kind of on your, some people lived, like, I personally lived alone. Um, yeah, a lot of people lived alone, and if, or two to a room, yeah. two. Like some people got like, like, cause we, all, we were on short term leases if we weren't from Minnesota. Yeah. So right. Like some people would be, had two to a, an apartment. Yeah. Cause I just remember like the Canadian girls were saying like, they were like basically in hotels and they were like, like the two weeks leading up to try to like limit their exposure or whatever. They were like literally locked down. Like you're in yeah hotel prison. I think so I just wanted to know. Yeah. What's that? Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, like, I think, like, early we were, like, locked down in, like, grocery delivery only. Like, yeah. we were not going, like, in and yet. Because we had a couple positive cases, like, early January. And it was, like, we were testing every single day. And those girls were not getting negative tests. And they needed negative tests by, like, a certain date in order to get on the plane. So those right. like, four or five girls were, like, eliminated from our practices. They were, like, stressed out of their minds. And then we were stressed out of our minds because we're, like, what if someone's, like, has bringing it. it to the ring so like it was just like not a good time Mental so what was your <laughs> yeah no kidding all that to say what was your like go-to covid like habit or thing that you picked up to like hi she was hey, my, she was my big helper because i had zoe oh. and i can go for walks unlimited walks and oh. play the ball i don't know i was just lucky personally because oh, I don't know. A lot of people don't have dogs here and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know what you did. I don't know what I did either. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I remember, like, working at doing, like, a morning workout and, like, an evening workout that just, like, kind of, like, split on my day. And then, like... Just grinding. Yeah, thoroughly enjoying, like, okay, I'm going to make this breakfast, like, make this lunch. I have absolutely no rush to go anywhere or do anything because... I'm here. <laughs> All the garnishes and perfect plate presentation because you're just like, oh, God, get this day over with. That's funny. Okay. And I did want to ask, Brant, you about because your 2018 Olympics was especially special. Right. And I want our listeners to understand why. So why don't you tell us that story? Yeah. So 2018 was really cool. It was in South Korea, which my sister Marissa is, she's adopted from South Korea. She's about a year older than me. And she, um, since she was adopted, she had citizenship with South Korea and they, a few years before the Olympics had like kind of recruited her to try out for their team. And then she ended up making the South Korean team. Um, and as the host country, they had a team in the Olympics, obviously. And so, yeah, we were both at the 2018 Olympics, just on different teams, which I believe was the first time ever that there were athletes, sisters from in the same sport on different teams. So that was cool. Did not play against each other or anything, but um cool experience and then the other fun thing for their games were completely a riot because like and i mean like so cool and fun to go to because they were combined with north korea which was big news at the time so the north korean cheerleaders would be there doing their thing which i don't know if you remember seeing videos of that but like it was just wild and these games like it was just so loud and um like they would just break it out of the zone and the place would just go nuts. So it was super <laughs> fun to watch those games. Like the other team would score and they would cheer. Like they just, I don't think they really understood hockey, but they were just so proud of this team and it stood for so much at the time. They were, I don't know, whatever, trying to show some solidarity and all that. So it was a really a cool thing for her to be a part of. And um, she made friends with these North Korean girls, but we'll never get to, I guess, yeah. uh, interact with them again. So it's kind of a weird thing. And, um, just something that most people will never be a part of and uh, just kind of added to that experience, I guess. For sure. It gives incredible perspective for like the different 
kind of ways that you know different countries are living and the restrictions and yeah politics and everything like that but it, that is kind of like the the i don't know uni- unifying piece of the olympics is like yeah like you see the whole world come together for sport right so mm-hmm. it's i think it's really cool that you guys got to share that experience together and i'm sure your you know your folks your family yeah. uh, immediate and extended were super pumped to see that happen oh for sure they loved it they were busy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I think they had a game every single day because it would be like, I'd play, then she'd play, I'd play, she'd play. So they were busy. Keeping yeah. them in the ranks, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I do have a little fun section. I oh. kind of prepped these two with this. Because we're like, we got like 10, 15 minutes to go. So I, I just did like a random question like generator because I'll be honest, like I don't really know either of you guys outside of, you know, this moment on the podcast, this was a Cax and I try to like kind of trade back and forth, like getting different people on. And, um, she was definitely more closely, uh, connected to you guys than I was. So this is like my, like, it's, I I don't want to call it speed dating. That's kind of creepy. So (laughs) I just kind of love like a random question generator. It's 21 questions, but there's not 21. I think there's like 17. We probably won't hit all of them. So, uh, we can, you guys can both answer one answer, I have no plan for this. I'm just going to start asking questions and you guys cool. have your way with it. <laughs> so first question is going to be, do you guys have any hobbies? Hannah walks. Next question. No, just kidding. <laughs> Hannah walks like a million steps would, a day. I would say like, yeah, I like, well, I walk a lot. Golf is kind of fun, but I just like don't find a ton of time for that anymore. Uh, what else? Netflix. Netflix. I don't have any good shows right now if that's a follow-up question. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also currently out of shows. I'm a big homebody. I'm a big homebody. Oh, the fireplace. We both we oh. both enjoy sitting by our fireplace. Is that a hobby? <laughs> yes. Hobby. Sitting on Absolutely. Like what are we doing by the fireplace? Are we reading? Or are we... We're probably watching, watching TV. TV. Wait. Drinking sparkling water, both fireplace of us. Is uh, in honor I love that. of this yeah. situation. Setting the mood. <laughs> wow, um, the coziness. The cozy. <laughs> Okay, this is a random question, and the answer might be no. That's also okay. Do you collect anything? I do not. I don't think I'm a collector. <laughs> I'm not a collector, but I like to like have red wine always like available. Okay. <laughs> so like, I sometimes like if I'm shopping in a grocery store and I just happen to stroll down the wine aisle, I typically will read a new label and maybe buy it. But I would say, are that. you? I was just going to ask, are you somebody who buys based on the label or based on like the like s- country states? Um, a little bit of both. And then I'll read the back. back. And if it somehow is enticing to me, I'll buy. <laughs> if it tells a good story, you'll, <laughs> yeah, buy. you'll buy it. Eh? Yeah. Um, this is a good follow up question to that. What do you enjoy spending money on? Uh, <laughs> Travel would be my favorite thing too which right now i haven't really been able to travel yeah. much like but that would be like my favorite thing yeah. to do what i would say like spending money just like enjoying yeah. like if i'm with my family and we're going out to eat like that like i just like spending time like quality time and if it's during an activity or going on a trip just like experiences yeah like definitely like going out to eat is uh, i spend most of my money doing that <laughs> that it's actually not- no <laughs> No cooking for him. <laughs> no cooking. Not a chef. I just don't enjoy it. I love it. It's not for everybody. No, like, it's just, I don't really, yeah, I'll just eat whatever anyway. So it's, that's a good way to be. If you're not a cook, you have to be like, not also a picky eater. Right. Like just, exactly. I could eat peanut butter and jam sandwiches for the week. Yeah, it's fine. Every, day, like, yeah, every single day. That's how I am. I literally can eat the same thing for three weeks straight and then i'll move on to something else i also do that sometimes like with whatever i'm cooking like i just love it so much that i just need it well and i feel like you guys are so busy that it's like if you can meal prep and get a meal that you enjoy eating like yeah eat it five days in a row who cares exactly yeah Yeah. so on the travel note brant i wanted to ask you you had the opportunity to actually go to australia oh yeah for a hockey camp didn't you yes can you tell us what that was like yeah so it was through like an acquaintance I had met, but we had met like through coaching at camp, me and Danny do every summer. Um, but yeah, I was able to bring Haley Scrupa and Hillary Knight and 
we went and coached this camp in Australia and then we extended our trip a few days. It was awesome. Like everyone there was so happy to have us. Um, the flight is very long. However, it was definitely worth longer it. Than I, to Beijing? It's longer than Beijing, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, long. it's like yeah. it's yeah. It's out there, but it's totally worth it. We did want to go to New Zealand as well, but we did not have time. But I would recommend both of them. I think Hillary's been to New Zealand before, so yeah. But that was it. Was awesome. We did the whole. I forget what it's called, but there's like that coast, and we did the drive. We drove, and we made Hillary drive because you have to drive on the other side of the road. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was a little scary. And then she made us do like a helicopter tour, um, which was cool, a little scary, but yeah, it was a great. That's experience. awesome. And you were in Melbourne, right? Was it uh, Melbourne? Yes, Melbourne. Yeah, yes. at Docklands. I actually played in that rink. Really? Ooh, yeah, so yeah. I went down there, uh, thirteen, fourteen. So like yeah. the Olympic year. Uh, so I right. just went down, same sort of thing. I was like, yeah, hey, why not? Like, I'll go travel the world. And then yeah. I found out they had hockey, which was a, a yeah, shock have, to me. They have, like, a pro league. Apparently, like, a lot of the rinks don't even have, like, glass and stuff. Like, it's – but Yeah. And they don't pay you, but they'll, like – like, they'll pay for imports to stay there. So, like, they were trying to recruit us. <laughs> but Oh, my but, gosh. Um, I don't know. If, uh, I would be – you know what? If I didn't – have anything else going on it would be pretty fun to live in I will, for a few months i will say like the the caliber surprised me but i think that you guys would absolutely crush them um <laughs> let's go <laughs> points for game yeah. Off, yeah exactly they'd be making a no more american import rule <laughs> um who on Team USA do you think knows you best and then a follow-up question who on your pwhpa team knows you best Oh. On Team USA, that knows me best. I'd say for me, it's for the USA team, it's probably Lee, only because I've known her the longest. Like we, I've known, known her since we were like little children playing the soccer. We played soccer together, I think, before we played hockey together. Um, and then on Team USA, guys. maybe Hillary. I mean, or sorry, on Team Sonnet, maybe Hillary. Yeah. Same Wait. reason. You guys have played together for. Yeah, just yeah. a few years. Just a few years though. So you and Lee played soccer together. We played soccer together. <laughs> you didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, mostly because I know the guy here she played soccer. And we were in the same class at the U of M until that. she did the whole Olympic thing and then took a year off or whatever for that. <laughs> so for twenty. Are you guys the same? Are you guys the same year? Yeah. Same birth well, year. Same. No, I'm technically the birth year before her, but we're the same school year. We were school school year, year. Yeah. Everyone thinks she's way older than me. I don't know why, but... Well, it's because she's a giant. <laughs> and she, she might act a little older than me. That's okay. <laughs> On the Team USA, I would have to say Jesse Comfer knows me the best. And then um, Team Harvey's um, Lee, I would say. Lee or Sophia Shaver? Me and Sophia so are very similar. I so it's another queen for the black on black. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Um, okay, what is... I'm just trying to look through these and kind of weed out the ones that I think are lame. Um, is there anything on your bucket list? Ooh. Hmm. I don't... I personally don't, like, have a written down or even a written in my brain bucket list. <laughs> I just kind of <laughs> go with the flow. Like, there's obviously things I'd probably want to do at some point, but I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> if, that, if, if Sam was like, we should plan a trip to wherever, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds fun. Let's do it. And then that would be like it. Hawaii is yeah. up there for me. Yeah, sure. Sure. Hannah's coming. We did try to go right. to Hawaii right we before did. COVID. Right, when, right as it COVID hit, when we our worlds got canceled, they were like, let's go to Hawaii because our worlds got canceled. And then obviously. The like, world, we were like the first thing, like leaks were still going yes. on when it got canceled. So we were like, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, we I knew people go. in Hawaii at the time. I was like, oh, let's just go. Yeah. So that, I'm so yeah. sad about that. Trip. That didn't work. <laughs> well, you guys got to book it now. This is your yeah. sign. Oh, this is yeah. the universe yeah. bringing it, it back is. to you. Yeah. So book that Hawaii trip. Okay. Yeah. We'll go one last question. Um... <laughs> What is okay? Aside from the necessities, yep. what is one thing you could not go a day without? Oh, day without necessities so like cell phone is in there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's a necessity yeah, that's in this day and age. 
Maybe my bubbly sparkling water. I knew you were going to say that. I was also going to say that. Some sort of, like, flavored sparkling water. I do enjoy that. I could go a day without it, though, so that might be a lie, but I wouldn't like to. Blackberry. What's what's your favorite? Black cherry, raspberry, strawberry. Are we on bubblies, or is this La Croix, or what? No, bubblies. Yeah. Yeah. Bubbly, yeah. And Um, they're at a lot of the PETA events. I like it. Yeah. I'm I'm a watermelon girl right now myself. I was oh, cherry. Lime. Oh, cherry. Yeah. Did okay. you say you're lime? Lime. Always Classic lime. lime. Yeah, but my favorite is Waterloo, and they have one that's like lemon and lime in one, but it's not Ooh. always just lime. But I like bubbly, too. Close second. That's funny, because Adam Wilde, who he hosts the SDP, an- another SDPN show, uh, he's like a big bubbly guy, and they always chirp him for it. So he's got some fellow... <laughs> Bud yeah, Lights yeah. is oh, yeah, what I'm going to call us. We get one when we fly pretty much yeah. every time. <laughs> I, I like, love that. Nice. Yeah, that's a necessity. <laughs> awesome. Well, and of course, you guys are coming back to Canada. We keep dragging you back here. We yes, just, we you know, the, the front half of this PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour has been very Canada heavy in the yeah. beginning. But so we're headed back to Ontario. We're playing... We got Harvey's and Sonnet in Peterborough on February 10th. Ooh, Adidas. I was that either. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Harvey's in uh, Scotia okay. in Peterborough. Okay. Adidas and Sonnet in Niagara. Gotcha. And then February 11th, we have Adidas and Harvey's in Barrie. Yeah. And Sonnet and Scotiabank in Kitchener. So it's going to be a very busy weekend. But it's after that, we finally get to head south. Yeah. We got Tampa the 24th, 26th, and Washington March 3rd and 5th. Are you guys excited to be back on home turf? Really yes. excited. <laughs> Definitely. Will we see some Hannah Brent and Savannah Harmon fans and family in the stands, you think? Yeah, I think I think I convinced my dad to go to Tampa. <laughs> my mom was interested in going to Tampa, but she's for sure already booked for DC. Oh, there you go. I love that. Yep. I mean, if I'm going to go, you may as well go somewhere warm and exactly. get exactly. that tan on. Yeah, yeah it's definitely excited to get out of Canada. Love Canada, but we like the U.S. more. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And we're excited to go there, too, because, yeah, I mean, you guys always put on a good show. The The American Stops have been fantastic hosts for us in the past, and I know that uh, the upcoming ones will be no exception. Sure. And you can catch Hannah Brandt and Savannah Harmon on the Secret Dream Gap Tour and in the Rivalry Series which closes out. We're dragging it back to Canada again, <laughs> February 20th and 22nd in trois Rivière and Laval, Quebec. I hope Cax is really proud of that French. I really tried to roll the R's. It sounded a little Russian, but I it did my great. best. <laughs> <laughs> both games, both of those games will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, you can catch those on TV. For tickets, merch, standing, and more, we can head to pwhpa.com or follow us at pwhpa, guys. That's all we have for today. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks thanks for for having having us. That was a blast. We'll catch you guys next week on the Noxie and Cax show. Hopefully Cax will be back. Otherwise, it'll just be me. (laughs) We'll see you then, guys. Thanks again. Bye-bye. The Noxie and Cax show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA and presented by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMRD. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out SDPN.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. Freestyle!